do you even have standards? Um, you know, I, I put something at the bottom of most of my social media posts. Uh, you're only as good as your standards are high. Hashtag, do you even have standards? Hashtag, uh, D-Y-E-H-S, okay? And, um, you know, a while ago, somebody, like, um, actually commented. Because I was commenting with a couple people, and the thing was Instagram. And uh, this other fucking loser troll, internet troll, jumps in. And he's like, man, people don't like you because you say, do you even have standards? And that's implying that, uh, you know, other people don't have standards. So it's interesting that a loser internet troll would say this. Because the fact of the matter is, I'm not implying a goddamn thing. I am flat out stating emphatically that 99% of the people in the world do not have standards at all, okay? Um, and the 1% has standards, extremely high standards in certain areas of their lives. And that's kind of interesting because 99% of the people suck, okay, in the world. And 1% are successful. That's why they're called the 1%. You know, 99% of the people are for, you know, more or less broke. 1% are super rich. 99% of the people are in terrible shape or at best average shape. 1% of people are in awesome shape. You know, 99% of people are very unhappy in their relationships. 1% of people are ecstatic about their relationships. So isn't it funny that 99% of the people, and this is just like I said, my opinion, but 99% of the people in my opinion have zero standards and 99% of the people in the world also suck. Okay, and like I said, of the 1%, most of them, are the one percenter in a certain area, you know, extremely wealthy, but out of shape, extremely in shape, but no good relationship, etc. So let's go ahead and talk about this. How do you know if you have standards? And the answer is quite simple. A standard is something that you can describe in a clear, concise, short bullet statement, okay? Without hesitation, without thinking. Now, how many grams of protein do you take in a day? If you cannot answer that immediately, without hesitation, you have no standards for your protein intake. How many calories do you take in a day? If you cannot answer that immediately, you have no standards in that area. How many times a week do you work out? How many times a week do you do strength training? How many times a week do you do cardio? How many times a week do you do, you know, whatever kind of, um, re, uh, like, uh, rehabilitation, prehabilitation, you know, whether it's getting a massage or going to the sauna or stretching or whatever, how often do you do that? Now, if you cannot give a very clear, concise bullet statement answering that question, you don't have any standards in that area of your life, okay? Now, let me get, no, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with not having standards in a certain area of your life, okay? Nobody can excel in every single area of their life. For instance, how often do I practice a musical instrument? Well, I don't, okay? But the thing is, if you do not have standards in that area of your life, you have to admit it, okay? And the problem with this motherfucking loser internet troll is he's like, on one hand, he doesn't have standards, and on the other hand, he's kind of pissed off because I'm bringing up the fact that most people don't have standards, and he's probably one of them. So what I'm basically trying to say is pick your battles, Pick your battles, decide what you want, and then set up the standards in your life that will get you the results that you want in that area of your life. You know, like I said, if you want to, um, you know, if you want to get in shape, for instance, I want to get in shape, okay? I want to get stronger, I want to get more athletic, okay? I work out six days a week, period, end of story. Not seven, not five, not four, six days a week. I do two upper body and two lower body strength workouts. I do cardio every single day that I work out, okay? Every single one of those six days I work out. Uh, you know, I do, uh, I always do high intensity explosive interval training, okay? Cardio for a long time when I do cardio. My cardio is done after my strength training. I do my cardio in a way that brings, um, that, 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 that uh, coincides with the strength training I did. So if I do lower body weights, okay, I will do squat tucks and burpees and build up explosive power and anaerobic endurance in my legs primarily. If I do upper body, I will do upper and lower body plyometrics, okay, a lot of upper body plyometrics, which will bring out sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, get a pump in my upper body, 
okay, and it will build explosive power and aerobic endurance in my whole body, but especially my upper body, okay? I don't break a sweat. I don't do a little of this, do a little of that. I don't sometimes do a class and sometimes work out with a trainer and sometimes work out on my own and sometimes work out with my buddy. Okay, if I see someone I know in the gym, I don't just do their workout. I do exactly the same thing on that particular day of the week, week after week, week after week, week after week. Those are my standards, okay? So like I said, if you just go to the gym to break a sweat, you don't really have standards, okay? You could break a sweat by sitting on your ass in the sauna and that's not gonna build your biceps, okay? Um, you know, you can go ahead and move around a little bit and work on the Nautilus machine. That's not going to increase your vertical, uh, vertical jump, okay? So like I said, you do not have standards if you do not go ahead and have, uh, you know, a very concise bullet statement that describes what your standards are in this certain area. Now, having said that, one of the fastest ways to become the 1% is to have extremely high standards in one area of your life and no standards in other areas of your life. For instance, uh, love him or hate him, I was a big fan of Conor McGregor as he was coming up, and one of the things he used to say is, he doesn't know anything about you know, football, soccer. He doesn't know anything about soccer. He doesn't know anything about anything else. All he knows is basically fighting, you know, movement he used to call it. Studying human movement, studying the human frame, that's basically what he talked about. Back when he was coming up before he became, you know, the Conor McGregor we love to hate. So, he became, for a while at least, in the top 1% of MMA fighters because all he did, he had extremely high standards for himself in terms of the fitness that applies to mixed martial arts, the technique, the training that applies to mixed martial arts, the research that applies to mixed martial arts, sitting around thinking about mixed martial arts. So he became the top 1%. Because of that, like I said, he had zero standards for anything else. Zero standards for any other sport, zero standards for any other job. And once again, you know, that's the way that you excel in a certain area. That's why he was the top 1% and maybe still is the top 1% in mixed martial arts. Okay, because they have very well-defined strategies. And this is, once again, I keep saying this, you know, people talk about inspiration, motivation, you know, planning your life in terms of fitness and finances. And uh, the reason is because it's really easy to measure. Okay, but this applies to everything else. So tell me this, what are your standards for spending time with your family? What are your standards for spending time with your kids? What are your standards for you know, taking care of yourself? What are your standards for saving money? What are your standards for, um, for vacation? Okay, what are your standards for your hobbies? Okay, what are your standards for reading books? Okay, for instance, one of my favorite standards is reading a chapter a day. I'll probably do a video about this. I've done a video a couple of times. I haven't really uploaded it yet, but I'm going to do a video about how to read like a five million page book, okay? And basically what you do is a book is about, you know, 20 pages per chapter, a lot of times 10 pages per chapter. There's no reason you cannot read at least one chapter a day. So even if you get like this huge, massive book like uh, Schwarzenegger's uh, autobiography, Total Recall, awesome book. It's like a million pages, but... If you read just one chapter a day, just like 15, 20, 25 pages a day, which everybody should be able to do, one a day, you'll get through it in a month, okay? That would be a good standard for reading. So like I said, go ahead and assess the areas of your life that are important. Family, fitness, finances, business, career, education, hobby, you know, self-improvement, family, etc., whatever. And go ahead and define what your standards have to be in order to reach the top 1%, okay? Do you spend, like for instance, my girlfriend and I, we spend every night a half an hour to an hour watching an episode of an old TV show together. We sit down on the sofa, we pet the kitty cats, our 160 pound bull mastiff who thinks he's a lap dog tries to jump up on our laps, so we basically just give him treats and try to pet him while he hopefully stays on the ground and not on our laps on the sofa, and we watch well, let's see, we watched the original Star Trek, one episode after another, until every episode we had watched, all three seasons. Now we're on Gilligan's Island. 
It's not about watching TV. It's about spending time with each other and talking about where we were in life and what we were doing back when we first saw this episode. It's about spending time with each other, spending time with the cats. Once a week, Sunday usually, we go ahead and we walk somewhere. We usually go to St. Augustine, oldest city in America. St. Augustine, Florida. We walk along the water. We usually grab a stogie. I know it's stupid, but yes, I do smoke a cigar once a week or once every two weeks. And we go ahead and we talk about our future. We talk about our plans. Those are our standards. That's what keeps the relationship going. So, like I said, what are your standards for fitness, for nutrition, for finance, for career, for business, for family, for friends? And most importantly, don't forget about yourself. Because if you don't help yourself first, you're not going to be able to help anybody else. Now, uh, if you're looking for somebody to help you raise your standards in terms of nutrition and fitness, you might want to go ahead and check out my low-carb cutting and bulking diets. Because, as I said in another video, no matter what you want to do with your body, you all got all the answers right in there. Unless you're an extremely high level elite athlete, in which case you want to check out my anaerobics diet, which is a targeted ketogenic diet for, like I said, boxers, people who work extremely hard, extremely explosively, maybe CrossFitters who need some carbs before and after they work out. But other than that, the people who need my anaerobics diet 3.0, targeted ketogenic diet, carb timing work, uh, diet, you might want to check out my low carb cutting and bulking diet. There are diets in there that you can use to cut fat. There are diets in there you can use to build muscle. There are diets in there you can use to maintain what you've got. Just stay where you've got once you reach the point you want to be at. So no matter what your standard is, you'll find a diet in that package of diets that will get you exactly where you want to be. Go ahead and check it out. If you're watching this on YouTube, the link's below the video. If you're watching this on Instagram, the link is in my profile. And make sure that you have standards that you can define because your standards define your life. And the quality of your standards define the quality of your life. See you guys in the next video.